Dr. Corey, I so appreciate hearing from you about your work um, in peacemaking with young people. As so I think about the youth workers that we work with and that we want to empower to do this work, um, I don't think it would be hard to compel them to want to do it, but I wonder what practices or habits, what pre-work might they need to think about or engage in before they walk in to do the peacemaking work and justice work with young people? Yeah. Um, I think the first thing is to, to learn enough about our own context to know that you are already in the middle of a conflict, in an age conflict. Um, that as much as I, as a youth worker, love young people, I'm the exception to the rule. And so um, I've written about in other places about how if you actually use the lens of peace building to think about the way adults and youth relate to each other, then you can start to see, look, if I am a Protestant in Northern Ireland um, and I'm going to hang out with a group of Catholic youth, like I would have to know all of the history behind what I, who I am as I walk into that room. As a youth worker, you need to know something about the history of who you are when you walk into this room. Is there a history? Is, is there a, a many years of experience that young people have had of adults that have broken promises, that have manipulated them for their own agendas? that have dismissed their ideas as not being important, that have uh, act, you know, ignored them because they were actually afraid of them, right? Uh, w one of the things that drives me crazy is when uh, you go to an event where there are young people and all of the adults are standing off against the wall in the corner talking to each other and possibly even talking about the young people, right? They're not dumb. They know that's what you're doing. And in all of your body language, you're sending the signal like, I don't want to talk to you, right? And so you walk in and they're already used to adults seeing them as lazy or seeing them as spoiled or seeing them as dangerous. So you've got to do extra work to overcome that. You've got to do extra work to build trust, to say, I'm not going to be the one that's going to dismiss your ideas out of hand. I'm not going to be the one that assumes that uh, you're just trying to pull a fast one on me. I'm not going to be the one that's going to try to convince you to do something because I'll be able to tick this off as on my number spreadsheet as opposed to because I honestly genuinely believe this would be something you would love to do, right? So first you need to do some pre-work to understand that you are walking into already a cultural war zone in which adults and youth have been pitted against each other. And we may not necessarily see it, see it that obviously, but that's that's what you're walking into. So you're the ambassador of adults and you got to do a lot of work to make up for the bad experiences of the adults. So then that involves humility and a willingness to listen and to hang out and actually a willingness to absorb some hostility and take it because you're the bigger person because you're the person in the room with more uh, with more power. So because of that long history, if you plop down next to some young people and start to strike up a conversation, they might necessarily talk to you right away. Uh, they may roll their eyes at you, right? They may, they may be mistrustful of you. And that's because of this long history. You got to be persistent, you know, not in an annoying way, not in a stalking way, but just this willingness to sort of let yourself be the awkward person that keeps stepping into the space and reaching out. And even if you're going to be rebuffed, but stepping into the space and listening instead of talking, listening to what's going on in their lives and taking it seriously. Yeah, at, at ages that we are when we're older, certain aspects of the experience of friendships and relationships and, and, and uh, successes and failures seem small to us now because we've got bigger responsibilities, but it's everything to them in that one moment. And so take it as seriously as they do. Right? So listen, be humble, um, know your context. Um, and then of course, love them unconditionally. Love them even when they're being annoying. Love them even when they don't want to do the great program you came up with. Uh, lo 
you know, love them anyway because what they mostly experience is conditional love. That they are only as good as their most recent success. And if they can only experience it in one place in their lives, at least have the church be a place where they're not being judged by their most recent accomplishment and just keep loving them even when they're annoying and even when they're failing.